A strong aftershock ignited panic today in Chile, four days after the major earthquake which flattened buildings and produced a deadly tsunami. The coastal towns which bore the brunt of the destruction are still on constant edge and loudspeakers were used to reassure residents after today's tremor. The BBC's Claire Marshall is in Concepcion, one of the city's hardest hit by Saturday's quake, and she filed this report. Hey, alto! Alto! Chile's second city, devastated by the earthquake, once again in panic. Get out of here, this man says. There's a tsunami alert. Those who can make their way to higher ground, but some are stuck in their cars, unable to flee. Just to give you a sense of what the people of Chile are having to cope with, there's just been an aftershock here, registering about six on the Richter scale. The army here are trying to move everyone out of this area. A short time later, the all clear is given, but people are still terrified. There's so much uncertainty, so much fear. It's so difficult for the family, for the children. It's chaos. We found one family still too frightened to sleep in their own home. They rest in the street in its ruins. I've not seen any response from the government. Their reaction has been far too slow for the people. There is now a heavy military presence in Concepcion. It stopped most of the looting and services are slowly being restored. But residents are still having to protect themselves. Ivan Gonzalez helped put up these barriers to keep out the thieves. Now he's cordoning off an area to protect others. This building may well collapse. I have felt much more secure since the military arrived, he tells us, but there are a few people still coming who are causing problems. Given the magnitude of the quake, many of the more modern buildings stood up to it well, but not all of them. It will take a long time to mend this broken city. And shortly after she filed that report, Claire joined us from Concepcion. So, Claire, have the soldiers now got the security situation under control? It has got a lot better here in Chile's second city of Concepcion. Just talking to some people who'd actually put their own barricades at the end of their streets to protect themselves from thieves and looters, saying that the soldiers arrived uh, a while ago now and things are a lot better. We've seen uh, a big evidence of them on the streets, actually even conducting traffic and that kind of thing. But even elderly ladies I've spoken to here in Concepcion saying that they feel much safer now that the troops are around, but saying that, that the, the looters did so much damage over the last couple of days. Uh, they do... They, they have, uh, have had a terrible time of it, but at least the security situation does seem to be better here. So what's the big challenge now? Well, people just wondering when they're going to get their houses back. A lot of people still sleeping in the streets, uh, wondering when the real help is going to start arriving. And the thing that's really terrifying is shortly after we, we arrived here, there was a panic on the streets here. There was another aftershock registering 6.0 and there was a tsunami alert that, that was issued shortly afterwards. There were trucks driving around the streets with loud hailers blaring out that everyone had to, to run to higher ground. Uh, people were really fearful and panicked. There were a lot of people stuck in their cars, wondering how they were going to get away, no one really knowing what was going on other than that, that they had to move. And then a few minutes later, about five or six minutes later, that tsunami alert was stood down. But just talking to people who were stuck in their cars afterwards, just people saying, this is awful to have to live like this. We just don't know when anything is going to get back to normal. So aside from the, the basic issues here, that the water is starting to come through. There are some areas of the city which have got power back. It's just that feeling of normality, which is going to take a long time to return. And Claire, you're in a position to survey the damage on the ground. How much destruction is there in Concepcion? Conception is, is bad. You can probably see the building here behind me. That was a 15-storey building which has just crumpled completely into the ground. Uh, there are lots of houses, again, just mounds of rubble. But one thing I have noticed, very different situation from Haiti where the buildings there were a lot more poorly constructed. Here, there are a lot of buildings which have withstood the quake. I just went to one street where the more modern buildings were standing and then uh, a more adobe-type house at the end of that street was in, was in ruins. 
So there are buildings which have withstood the quake. The lady who was in the building that I went to talk to that who withstood it said she was relieved that she was living, living in a building that had been made in more modern years and that had actually managed to withstand it. But there is a lot of clearing up that needs to be done here and still many of those basic services not, not yet restored. Claire Marshall, thank you very much indeed. A series of strong aftershocks of magnitude 5.5 and higher have struck areas devastated by the earthquake in Chile. The tremors were felt in several cities, including the capital Santiago. They did prompt new tsunami warnings, although those were later lifted. The aftershocks came as the authorities were working to speed up distribution of aid to the worst hit areas. The BBC's Steve Kingston, he's in the capital. These are still nervous moments in Chile. Here, in the nation's second city, Concepcion, there's been an aftershock. A local reporter explains that tsunami sirens have been sounded. It's chaos, he says. All the vehicles are getting out. But the army commander appeals for calm. We need to confirm this, he cautions. And moments later, it's clear there was never an official tsunami warning. But for some, even a false alarm is too much. <laughs> With each day that passes, the scale of what happened here is clearer. The seventh most powerful earthquake on record triggered waves which all but wiped out dozens of coastal communities. The sea claimed the most lives, in towns where more often than not, there was no tsunami warning. It's emerged that the Chilean Navy told the government there might be a tsunami 21 minutes after the quake, but communication was so poor but more than an hour later, President Michel Bachelet was still seeking clarification from officials. The military is shouldering the blame. We weren't very clear on this. We weren't sufficiently precise with the information we gave the president as to whether to maintain or cancel the tsunami warning. Those errors have increased the pressure on a government already feeling the strain of the relief effort. But supplies are now getting through and help is on its way from Cuba, America, Russia and the European Union. In Concepcion, the scene of looting two days ago, the army has restored a steely air of calm. But Chile's recovery is only just beginning. Steve Kingston, BBC News, Santiago. Now, the earthquake in Chile has dominated the news this week and it's clearly what you've been talking about as well. The BBC's interactive reporter Anna Adams has been looking at what you've been saying about it in Your World News. Welcome to this week's Your World News. It's a roundup of what you've been talking about around the world. And it was this time last week that Chile was hit by a massive earthquake that killed more than 700 people. Well, we've been hearing from a lot of viewers over there about what it's like to live in the aftermath of such a massive disaster. We spoke to Ricardo Leon on Skype. Now, he was in Conception, which is pretty much the epicenter when the quake struck. He had to leave his wife and child behind to rescue his grandmother. So this is what he had to say. I can see the city destroyed the old buildings. Most of the old buildings went down to the ground. Some, some of the new buildings are completely inherited. They're not, they're not good anymore. Some, uh, a few buildings have fallen. Uh, supermarkets, retail stores have been pillaged. Um, the roads are broken. I mean, destruction in construction, construction is quite, quite big. Well, despite the president's claim on Wednesday that there is enough food and water, we spoke to Roberto Canellis in Chicuero, who disagrees. We don't have water, we don't have electricity, we don't have telephone, we don't have cell telephones. At home, uh, we are very, uh, in a, a very bad situation. Um, we don't receive any, any support from uh, the authorities, the local authorities, and regarding water especially. Uh, we are using the water of our, of our swimming, swimming pool for, for the basic needs. Well, keep the tweets coming. Get in touch with me on Twitter at Anna Adams BBC or go to our website, bbc.com. Have your say and you could be on next week's show. The Chilean president, Sebastián Piñera, has announced plans to spend $12 billion on reconstructing those parts of the country worst affected by last month's devastating earthquake. Sebastián Usher reports. One month after the earthquake that devastated their city, hundreds of people from Concepcion gathered outside their cathedral. 
They marked the exact moment, 3.34 a.m., when the huge quake struck. Hundreds died and much of southern Chile was left in ruins. The newly inaugurated President Sebastián Piñera pledged his government support for those who'd suffered most. That morning of February the 27th returns to our memories. It was very hard for many people and especially for those who lost their loved ones. But I'm convinced that the best way to remember them and the best way to honour them is by standing on our own two feet. The damage the earthquake caused is estimated at some $30 billion. Mr. Panera says the government will somehow provide $12 billion for reconstruction. A local resident said she hoped the government would live up to its promises. We hope that everyone receives all the help they need. We hope that this government is for the people, that it's a government that is always united and remains, as it is now, with the people. But the challenge is daunting. One and a half million homes were damaged. Tens of thousands remain homeless. In Concepcion, the trauma of a disaster is still palpable. A nighttime curfew has only just been lifted. Soldiers still block off the business area to stop looting. But Mr. Panera wants the people of Concepcion to look forward, not back. He told them that it was time to dry their tears and begin the task of rebuilding Chile. Sebastian Usher, BBC News. It's been three months now since Haiti was devastated by a massive earthquake which left hundreds of thousands of people dead and scores more homeless. It was a natural disaster which hit without warning. But what if something could be done to actually alert people before an earthquake strikes? Well, that's exactly what a scientist in California is trying to do using volunteers and their laptops. From California, Rajesh Merchandani now reports. In cutting edge California, People are rarely without their computers. Maybe she's starting up the next Google. Maybe he's writing an Oscar-winning screenplay. Or maybe they're part of an earthquake early warning system. This one is vertical motion. And then if I shake it the other way, you'll see. This scientist wants to use something called an accelerometer that's built into many laptops. It's used to detect movement. She's out giving demonstrations hoping to recruit 10,000 quake catchers. A lot of uh, laptops have accelerometers in them. Basically, if I drop my laptop on the ground, it's supposed to stop the hard drive and sort of save the computer. Um, and so I figured that since there's already an accelerometer in there, we could use it to record earthquakes. A lot of readings from one area distinguish an earthquake from a lesser jolt. As long as the computer's on, the software is sending data in real time back to a central server. The idea is when a big tremor strikes, thousands of laptop sensors can cheaply and instantly collect a lot of information. And if scientists can pinpoint quickly where an earthquake starts, they might be able to send out a warning to places further away. In Haiti in January, a few seconds warning might have given people vital time to get out of poorly constructed buildings. California has its own experience of earthquakes. Gosh! Scientists here carefully study what happens so buildings can be constructed to withstand the big quake they say is overdue. California has a network of high-tech sensors in undisturbed locations. They're expensive and an early warning system here is years off. This one's a, what we call a shake movie. A leading seismologist says data from laptop sensors lacks detail but can still help. The more that we get Southern California to see that we are a seismically active community and we all have a role to play in being safer, the safer we're all going to be. So I think that the, that just the social aspect of it would make it completely worth it whatever the seismologic uses of it. Hey there, can I show you this? Back at the cafe, people seem impressed. It's California, come on. There's one big quake every 30 years or something, so it's, it's important, I think. That is brilliant, especially in a place like Southern California. This would come in very handy. I mean, we'd actually, we'd actually use it. When it comes to understanding earthquakes, could future safety be based on today's popular technology? Rajesh Merchandani, BBC News in Los Angeles. This is BBC World News America. Reporting from Washington, I'm Laura Trevelyan. A deadly earthquake strikes western China. 
leaving hundreds dead, tens of thousands injured, and reducing entire towns to rubble. It was a deadly and chaotic scene in western China today as a series of strong earthquakes struck, killing a reported 600 people and leaving more than 10,000 injured. 